Hello, Lucy. Hello, Conrad. Hello, Caleb. Papa's back. And since we've already looked at some Fantastic Four adventures and some Avenger stories, I thought you might like to read something about the X-Men. It's been a while since we've looked at them, and I've got a great story lined up for you. Look at this cover. We've got Count Nefaria. Uh, he is a new villain, but all these other villains have been cited previously in other comics, but not in stories that we've read. Here's the Plant Man, here's the Scarecrow, Porcupine, the Eel, and the Unicorn. And the story is called Divided We Fall, and sure enough, the X-Men get split up, and they, they get taken down one by one. So let's see what happens. All right, X-Men are the most unusual fighting team of all time. And the scene is the fantastic danger room in X-Men HQ, where the world's most unique superhero team has spent countless grueling hours developing to the peak their fighting prowess. But now, as they enter the familiar chamber, the miraculous mutants find themselves confronting a new and awesome sight. All of this, of course, is controlled by Professor X, their teacher and leader. And here's the Marvel girl. She says, that apparition, it's huge. We're all dwarfed by its shadow. Angel says, it's a robot, but more enormous, more powerful looking than any we faced. Professor X says, that is correct, Angel, since two of your most crucial missions of late have involved robot menaces. Do y'all remember the Sentinels? I have devised this ultimate test to see how, what you have learned. Therefore, meet Colosso. All right. Colosso means he's really big. And uh, Hank the Beast says, Colosso is a most appropriate appellation indeed. He makes King Kong look like an organ grinder's monkey. And Iceman says, Yipes, couldn't you just give us a written quiz for a change, Professor? Uh, it looks like he's as mean as the Sentinels and Lucifer's Ultra Androids rolled into one. Get with it, Bobby, says Cyclops, and we'll give this one the same treatment. All right, there he is. The next moment, the dramatic tableau is shattered as the massive metal figure strides ominously forward. Okay, Psych says uh, Iceman, the professor is leaving us on our own, so you'd better make with the deputy leader bit and fast. Uh, Cyclops says you can't fight an enemy until you know something about him, so the first thing we've got to do is find out the robot's powers. Great thinking, pal, agrees uh, Angel, but what's, uh, what'll Colossal be doing in the meantime? All right, X-Men, says the professor, you have five minutes to defeat Colosso. The time period begins now. You're entirely too beneficent, sir, says uh, the loquacious beast. Uh, those strange multicolored lights, adds Marvel Girl, they have an almost hypnotic effect. Well, somebody has to get the old ball rolling, and it might as well be me, says Angel. Wait, says Marvel Girl, you're flying directly at the android. Fly an evasion course, Angel, and be careful not to be dazed by those flashing lights, adds Cyclops. Relax, worry warts, with my speed, I can fly circles around this. Uh, it got Angel. He's falling. All right, so Colosso has uh, a, a, a paralyzing beam that struck Cyclops. I'm sorry, struck the angel. And he says, I'm paralyzed. I can't fly. So that's his main power. Just another crummy blast ray. That's what Iceman says. Marvel Girl says, don't worry, Warren. I'll stop your fall telekinetically. So you, she uses her mind power to catch the angel. 
And then uh, Iceman says a sheet of solid ice on the floor will put him on the skids to that overgrown trash can. If it worked on the Sentinels, it ought to work on Colosso. Well, let's see if it does. Good work, Iceman, but he isn't moving now, and I haven't enough mental energy to push him over. Well, says uh, Angel, at least Bobby stopped him long enough for me to recover. He can't advance without falling. However, to the X-Men's surprise, uh-oh, heat jets from his legs, melting the ice. A pushover this character isn't. A most astute deduction, my frostbitten friend, says uh, the Beast. I suspect that uh, Professor X has designed Colosso to counter all of the X-Men's powers. Then the most powerful and the most tragic of the mutant band steps to the fore. Out of the way, all of you, I'm unleashing my power beam. If I can damage a vital spot, then the rest of you will be able to finish him off. The only time I'm not a menace to society is when I'm combating one. Careful with those beady little eyes of your psyche. You almost pulverized the noble beast. Because look, uh, the robot's made of material that repels my beam. I should have guessed. Zap. And so the, his eye beam ricocheted and almost struck the beast. Fortunately, he's very agile and leapt out of the way. Things aren't exactly looking up. If Sykes eye beams can stop, can't stop Colosso, what can? Don't despair, lads. Relief is just a second away. And uh, Cyclops says the professor's tests are always capable of solution. There must be a way. Uh, so Hank goes thump, thump, clump, and boing. And he says the first, it behooves me to get behind my potent prey. Careful, Hank, says Marvel Girl. It'll take more than raw strength to defeat the robot. Fear not, female. Have I not always held that violence is the last refuge of the incompetent? I merely wish to throw it off balance so that Scott can have another go at it. It ducked. How frustrating. But it couldn't have seen me unless the professor is guiding it from below. Here comes a mental blast from Professor X. He says, no, Hank, I am only supplying it with power. The answer to your question lies elsewhere. Then the momentarily stymied X-Men regroup on the floor. As a Cyclops says, we struck out, acting separately. It's time to show what teamwork can do. Sure, says Iceman, that must be it. The same way we managed to defeat our previous robot opponents. But first, says Marvel Girl, we've got to find his weakness. I'm with you, Psyche, says Angel, but we'd better hurry. Our five minutes are almost over. Tempest fugits indeed, says the Beast. That means time flies, okay? Uh-oh, don't look now, but it would appear that Colosso is getting restless. Here he comes, and he looks mad. The professor must have equipped him with a temper in addition to everything else. He's got his, his uh, claws bared. His eyes are, uh, are shining bright. We can worry about that in a second. Right now, disperse, all of you, says Cyclops. I must be getting smarter, deputy leader, says Angel. I thought of that move all by myself. And so there goes Marvel Girl. I hope I can levitate myself to safety fast enough to elude the robot. And uh, B says, pardon if I seem unchivalrous, but gang way. And so he leaps ahead of Marvel Girl. And then the Iceman uses an ice slide to get out of the way. We can't win this fight by running away. We've got to make a stand and fast. However, it's no use. You and I were too slow, Scott says Marvel Girl. Colosso can use us as shields until the five minutes have elapsed. Perhaps, says Cyclops, but did you see how the lights on its head glowed more brightly as he reached out for us? That may be just the clue we need. Jean, the professor's blanket, will it to come to us at once? Of course, Cyclops, but I still don't see. Just do as I say. There's no time for explanations now. And Professor X thinks to himself, 
So Scott has figured out the secret of the robot's sensory powers. Once again, he's proven himself a resourceful leader, but the battle is not yet won. Excellent, Gene. You brought the blanket to us in record time. Now let it fall over the head of Colosso. Good girl. Thanks. Though to tell the truth, I don't see how that will help. We'll know in a moment whether I was right or wrong. The next second, astonishingly, Marvel Girl realizes he's dropping us. You were right, but what did the blanket do? I guess that those flashing lights were the source of his seeing. The beast attacked from behind, so we blocked them. We'll hit the floor hard. Watch yourself. Don't be so melodramatic, Scotty old boy. The angel is here to guide you down gently. As for Jean, you seem to have forgotten her telekinetic powers, which freed you in the first place. Thanks, Warren, says Cyclops, and then he thinks, he's right. I must watch myself, for she must never know how much I care for her. And even as Cyclops and Marvel Girl reach the ground safely, here's the beast. He says there, this exquisite knot should keep our ferric foe's senses confused a bit longer. But I'll need help. Wherefore art thou, Bobby O? And uh, Iceman says, right here, chum, I've concentrated my icy barrage. Uh, that will slow him, slow down his attempts to free himself. Well done, my quick frozen compere. Now the agile beast can take his leave. Keep it up, Iceman, uh, says Cyclops. As long as his head is covered, he can't operate properly. That's why he dropped Gene and me. But while the X-Men prepare their final attack, Colossus unveils still more startling surprises. Wouldn't you know it? He has more heat jets in his head. They're melting the ice. Not only that, but we have only seconds left before our time is over and we'll have lost our fight with the robot. Well then, I think it's time for the Super Deluxe X-Men Special Treatment. I'll keep pouring on the ice as long as I can. Marvel Girl says, well, I add my mental powers to the physical ones of Angel and the Beast to try to topple Colosso. The Beast says, with his present perplexed perceptions, we may be able to do just that. It's working, says Angel. He's starting to wobble. Don't let up. A Cyclops turns his eye beams to the floor, but he thinks, I can't turn my eye beams on the robot for fear of hitting Hank or Warren, but I can blast a hole in the floor beneath its feet. Then with a resounding crash, THOOM! He's down, says Iceman, that means we won. And we did it as a team, says Cyclops. No one of us could have done it alone. And then Professor X says, that is true, Scott. And that, of course, was the point of your bout with the robot. Alone, the powers of each of you of, are formidable enough, but together you are almost invincible. However, don't plan to rest on your laurels. I'll improve, Colosso, and one day you may face him again. Click! Professor X turns him off, because Colosso has done his job and tested the X-Men to the fullest of the extent of their powers and their teamwork. So, that's a good idea. You know, the three of you can do more working together than you can by working separately. That's true of all groups of people. In the meantime, since your last vacation was interrupted by the battle with the Mimic, maybe you remember him, I'm dismissing you all for a two weeks holiday. If any emergency arises, I'll contact you mentally. Great, says Angel, I'm halfway home now. And Marvel, Marvel Girl says, what a chance to visit my sister in Albany. Iceman says, did you hear what I heard, Beastie? Do you hear what I hear? Uh, indeed I did, Bobby Boy, and I'm relatively certain that we are elated for similar reasons. Say, Gene, says Angel, how about dinner in Manhattan before your train leaves? Why, I'd love it, Warren, if it wouldn't be a bother. Bother? Bite your tongue, gal. And uh, the beast says, I propose, lad, that we two embark for Greenwich Village post-haste. I'm with you, pal, says Iceman. 
And the uh, professor realizes only Cyclops remains pensive, grim. I'm becoming extremely worried about him. In almost less time than it takes to recount, the five fabulous teenagers are leaving for various destinations. Uh, and Scott, who Cyclops thinks Gene and Warren make a lovely couple, I envy him more than I ever dare, dare reveal. But uh, Gene says, Scott, why don't you dine with us? We'd love to have you, wouldn't we, Warren? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. What else can Warren say? Hop aboard, old buddy. Thanks. I think I will, replies Scott. But he thinks to himself, I know Angel doesn't really want me along, but I can't resist the temptation to, to spend even a few more minutes near the one that I love. And thus the X-Men depart, little dreaming that they leave behind them an anguished mind, a soul in torment. And uh, the poor professor, he thinks, they can walk in the sunshine, feel the wind striking their faces, while I'm confined to this wheelchair, a hopeless cripple. Is there no chance for me? Will I never walk again? I can't accept that fate. I can't. But even as Professor Xavier struggles desperately against despair, a quite different scene is being enacted some distance away in a secret fortification not far from the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. At last, all is in readiness. I, Count Neferia, am prepared to strike. For I have gathered together the remnants of my once powerful Magia gang, as well as five supervillains as my lieutenants. Too long have I felt the humiliating sting of my defeat at the hands of Iron Man. Now in this wealthiest of nations, I shall make Count Nefaria a name to be feared, and in so doing, I shall achieve ends the world does not suspect. Hmm. However, there is still one element missing from my plans, and this recent newspaper has provided me with the means of supplying that element. The out the I'm sorry, the X-Men are outcasts of society with powers beyond imagining. Look, the headline says heroes or villains. Who? What are they? And so the public mistrusts the X-Men, and so Count Neferia wants to use that against them. They must and shall become my allies. So the evil Count Neferia plans to capture the X-Men and enlist them to aid him in his nefarious plans. After her dinner with Warren and Scott, Jean, the Marvel girl, finds herself in the mammoth structure, which is Grand Central Station, and she overhears a radio broadcast. Special bulletin, one of the mysterious X-Men has been seen flying in the vicinity of Central Park. Stay tuned. And the listener says, this would have to happen when the Mets were only five runs behind. The New York Mets, y'all know baseball. Back in those days, the Mets... Uh, never did very well, so being five runs behind was about as good as it got for them. But that's beside the point. The story continues. Uh, Marvel Girl thinks a flying X-Man, but only Warren and I can fly, and he just left me in his car. Her feminine curiosity fully aroused, Jean Grey hails a cab, and soon the taxi driver says, Look, lady, it's none of my business, but this ain't no place for you, especially with them X-Men around. Thank you, answers Jean, but rest assured, I can take care of myself. Well, we'll see. As the cab speeds away, she thinks, uh, If the angel did fly here after dropping me off, I'll soon locate him and find out what's up. And so she dons her X-Men uh, uniform. But then she thinks if it's an imposter, he's in for it. Everything is so hushed, so tranquil, yet why do I have this nameless feeling of dread? Suddenly, tree branches grabbing me. That figure in the shadows, his strange weapon, must be activating the trees. Who is it? She says out loud. You do not know me, Marvel Girl. 
answers her opponent. But soon the world will remember the name of Plant Man and cringe at its mere mention. And now, my fair lady, my chloroform gas will take care of you. Ugh. And so he gasses her with chloroform and she goes to sleep. That got her, boss. And so, Plant Man is the first of Count Nefaria's villains to show up. And very easily, he has captured Marvel Girl. Well, when we return to our story, we'll see Nefaria's other allies and see how they uh, fare against the X-Men. But uh, after a brief break, we'll be right back. <laughs> 